So, ladies and gentlemen, right now what we have is we have a formula. Uh, 6x squared plus 2y squared plus 18x minus 10y plus 2 equals 0. All right? Now, last class period, we went over pretty much two equations. Uh -huh. All right? And we went over two different types of ellipses. We had an ellipse where we had a major axis of symmetry was vertical, and we went over an ellipse where the major axis, not axis symmetry, but the major axis was um, horizontal. So let's go back and review those two formulas. So the first one, we had x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals 1 divided by a squared divided by b squared. This was 1 where you had your major axis was horizontal. And we talked about where it was vertical. So we had x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals 1, b squared, a squared. Here's where it's vertical. So it's the exact same equation, pretty much, except the a and b are swapped. And what does the a and b represent? Remember, the distance from your center to your vertices. The center to your vertices, we call the distance a. And notice, when we had a squared, it's under the x, it was horizontal. When your a squared was under the y, we had a vertical, right? Okay, so we have two different formulas. We need to determine, and what they're asking us for this problem is, do you know, determine what the foci, the vertices, and the center. Now, we can do that, and I'll go through the problem how to do that again. We can do that when we have an equation that's in our standard form, right? Is this in standard form right now? No. So what we need to do is we need to rewrite it in uh, one of these <coughs> forms. So we need to figure out which form it's going to be like. Well, when I look at this and I say, all right, the main kind of, kind of tenets of these formulas is you have an x minus a, you have this squared. So pretty much what you have is you have a binomial squared. And right now I don't have any squareds, right? Nor do I have any fractions as well. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is let's group our x's and our y's and let's get our constant to the other side. So I have 6x squared plus 18x plus 2y squared minus 10y equals negative 2. Okay? Now, what I do is I can go a little bit of grouping and let's, um, let's factor out. All right, so I'm getting ahead of myself. So I want to write it so it looks something like that. Notice how that's a binomial squared. Does anybody, to get a binomial squared, does anybody know what I have to have before I, to go from a binomial squared, I have to make sure I, I have a perfect square perfect. trinomial. Because a binomial, binomial squared is the factored form of a perfect square trinomial, right? A binomial squared is the factored form of a perfect square trinomial. Does anybody remember the processes to creating a binomial squared or creating a perfect square trinomial? The formula we use? B divided by 2 squared. And that process is called completing the square. Completing the square, right? But if I take B divided by 2 and square it, that creates my final value C that creates a perfect square, which I can factor to create a binomial square. All right? Wow, I've got a lot of people saying they need to come with you. Uh, no, just give this one. Okay. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is, you guys remember, when we're completing the square, we cannot have coefficients in front of our quadratic term. So the first thing we're going to do is, I've got to factor out our coefficients. So I'll factor out a 6 here, so I have x squared plus 3x plus 2, y squared minus 5. Whoa. Does everybody see that? Remember, when we complete the square, we have to factor out those coefficients. Should we take out two y? Or did you just take out? I just factor out the two. So why is there no y? There's no y. There's no y. Okay. So now we need to complete the square. So we need to create that perfect square that we can now factor down. So let's do the x first. 
So if I want to complete the square and I'm giving x squared plus 3x, remember we do b divided by 2 and square it, which in this case is going to be um, 9 halves. Right? 3 divided by 2 squared, so I'm sorry, it's 9 fourths. Right? So I'm going to add 9 fourths on both sides. So I have 6 x squared plus 3x plus 9 over 4. Then let's do the y. So if I had y squared, I'd have y squared minus 5y. So, so I take b divided by 2 mm -hmm. and I square it, which in this case is negative 5 divided by 2 squared, which equals 25 over 4. Right? So it's going to be plus 2 times y squared minus 5y plus 25 over 4. Now, remember the biggest mistake that students make when completing the square. Is they kind of understand this and they remember, oh, we added in there, right? But then they always forget to remember. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're adding now a 9 fourths on the left side, right, you have to add the 9 fourths to the other side. But notice, this isn't just, I'm not adding a 9 fourths onto the side. I'm actually adding a 9 fourths that's being multiplied by a 6. Right? Yes? Yes. Okay. No. No. So you add it by 6 and then you add it to the other side? Sorry? Yeah, so, what, so I'm adding the 9 fourths. So then I add 9 over 4 yeah. and times 6. Yeah. Yeah. Which 9 times 6 is? It is 54, but that's not going to equally divide by 4, right? So let me check mine. What are you? I don't want to. Why didn't you multiply the 6? Yeah, why did you multiply the 6? Why didn't you divide if it's being multiplied on the left side? Okay, what am I adding right here? I'm adding a 9 fourths, right? I'm adding 9 fourths that's being multiplied by a 6. Yes. Okay, so are you going to add the 25 and 4 times 2, too? Exactly. Yeah. So now, um, wait. Oh, okay, so you add it on both sides, but you're Then, now we have to do this, right? Which is now it's going to be 2 times um, 25 over 4, which is going to be um, plus. 25 over 4 times 2. You guys get this? This is really, really important for you guys to understand. So we have, why am I multiplying 9 fourths times 6? Because that's why I added over here, 9 fourths times 6. Why am I adding a 25 over 4 times 2? Because that's what I added here, 25 over 4 times 2. Right? Okay, so when you go back and, um, and you get to those, when you... Uh, add them up, what we're going to have here is 54 and you add them up with the 4 over 4, so you're 104 over 4 and you add the negative, negative 2. Okay. Well, so here you're going to have 54 over 4 plus, what do you have, 50 over 4 and then plus negative 2 which is going to be negative 2 over 1, which would be, um, uh, so multiply that by 4 over 4, which would be negative 8 over 4. So if you add all of those up, you get uh, 96 over 4. That's negative 2, because you have to write it as a denominator. So you guys got this, Elizabeth? So negative 2 equals negative 8 over 4, right? Because you have to have them as the same denominator, okay. right? Yes? Do we have to show that or can we just put it in our... You don't, you don't have to show that, but you do need to understand. I just want to see where it's at so that you understand that you're going to have 24 is going to be this answer. So now we have a denominator of 24. Now, why was the whole point of what, why did we complete the square again? So we could rewrite this as a binomial square, right? Yeah. So I need to factor this down and say, what is this as a binomial square? So I have 6 times x. Uh, this is going to be plus 3 halves squared 
plus 2 times y uh, minus 5 halves squared equals 24. Let's write that over here. Okay? That's the factored form of each one of these perfect squares. Okay, so what I did is I took my perfect square and I rewrote them as a binomial square. Yes? Um, with the fractions, um, the same work uh, from the negative 2, couldn't you simplify the fractions after adding them and then subtracting 2? It's the same answer. Yeah. Would it work every time though? Yeah, you can reduce them and simplify them. All right, so now ladies and gentlemen, what we've done is we've completed the square, we added the terms over here, we got 24, then I now factor them to their binomial squared. Okay, so now we're starting to look like something that looks like those two formulas. Yeah, we're getting there. But now the main important thing is, guys, remember each one of these formulas equals 1. It doesn't equal 24. So let's get rid of that 24 to be a 1. So we have divide both sides by 24. Well, now that divides into 1. This divides into 12. And this divides into 4. So now my final answer is x plus 3 halves squared plus y minus 5 halves squared equals 1 over 12 and over 4. Okay. So we're still not even there because they're asking us what is the center, the foci, and the vertices. So we're not even there yet. But now we did all of that work so we can get it to a formula though that we can figure out what we're looking for. Right? No. Yes. I don't understand how you could divide 24 when there's nothing being multiplied by that. You. Or do you? What do you mean? You're trying to get one to make the formula. So as long as you divide everything on both sides by 24, that's, there's nothing on. Like let's say, if I did 3x equals 9, if you're dividing by, you just divide by 3, right? As long as you divide on the same side, on opposite sides, these are equivalent equations. So I'm just dividing everything by 24. Um, as long as you divide everything by 24, you're still getting an equivalent equation. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to erase one of these formulas. So you guys look at this equation. You see we have an x and a y. We're going to now have a new center, right? Our center is going to be our h and k. However, we need to determine what is our major axis of symmetry. Is, I'm sorry, our major axis. Is this going to be a horizontal or is it going to be a vertical? Vertical. Where is our a squared? Which one of these? Which one is a squared? Which one is b squared? 12. 12 is your a because a is larger than b, right? A represents the major axis and b represents the minor. So therefore, we know that a squared equals 12. So since the larger of the values is under the y, does that mean my major axis is going to be vertical or horizontal? Vertical. Very good. So therefore, we can kind of erase this, right? Because we don't need this. Anymore. No. Because the formula that we're dealing with today for this problem, so the formula we're dealing with today is going to be this one, where my a squared is under my 12, right? Um, and our formula is going to look something, and our graph is going to look something like that. All right. So, so let's go through what we know, ladies and gentlemen. Center is going to be your hk, right? So center, so they asked us to find the center, which is h comma k. Um, let's write this in different colors. So center is h comma k. So in this case, our center is going to be a negative 3 halves comma positive 5 halves. Yes, no, maybe so? Wait, is it all divided by some order? No, nope, but your center is just your h and your k. Remember going back to the formula, h, opposite of h, opposite of k. So you look in this formula, opposite of h, opposite of k. Okay? Now let's go and look at our foci. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, there's a couple tenets that we have of our prime. Remember we have a zero, or we have the center. We have the two vertices. And then there's one more point, which we call our foci, right? Now, what is the distance, the distance from the center to the foci, or foci, is a distance of C. 
Do we know what C is? I don't know. No. Is there a value for C up here? No. No, we don't have a value for C. We're ashamed of Okay. Now, if you remember, I did show you guys that relationship between A, B, and C. You guys remember what that relationship was? It was very similar to the Pythagorean theorem. A squared equals C squared plus B squared. A squared equals C squared plus B squared. A squared equals B squared plus C squared. Very good. So let's go and figure out. So if we, do we know A and B then? Yeah, we know A and B. Or we know A squared and B squared. Let's figure out what C squared is. So we have the relationship between A, B, and C. And remember, B is the length of your minor, the minor axis. So we have A squared equals B squared plus C squared. Well, A squared is 12. B squared is 4 plus C squared. Minus 4, minus 4. So you have 8 equals C squared. Take the square root. C squared equals 2.828.4271. But we should give it an approximate answer like that. We can just rewrite that as plus or minus 2 radical 2. Right? So, the foci. Ladies and gentlemen, are the foci on the same axis, major axis, as our center? Are they on the same axis? Yeah, they're on the same major axis, right? So are they going to have the same coordinate? Would the foci have the same coordinate as the center, one of them? Which coordinate? Is it going to be the x or the y coordinate? It's going to be exactly the same. The x coordinate, right? Because all I'm doing to go from the center to the foci on a vertical axis is I'm just moving up and down, right? I'm not going left and right at all. So therefore, for my foci, my h remains the same. So it's going to be negative 3 halves, comma, 5 halves, plus or minus 2 square root of 2. So I could go ahead and simplify this work. We can add and subtract those. Yes? You guys can write them in there. Um, just to kind of keep this video a little bit shorter, we are, you guys are going to have two different, that you are going to have to add those. Yes, you can't combine them into one or no. I do not want you to give me a decimal approximation. So leave it into that work, but you guys can't rewrite those. Can't at least combine them with the same denominator. Let's go and take a look at the vertices. Remember, the vertices are also going to have the same h coordinate, right? Here's your vertices right here. They're also going to have the same. So your vertices are going to be negative 3 halves, comma, 5 halves, plus or minus. Well, what is your distance from your center to your vertices? Plus or minus a. Do we know what plus or minus a is? Well, we know a is 12. Or the, I'm sorry. We know a squared equals 12. So there, therefore, a equals, my bad. 2 square root of 3. So it's going to be plus 2 square root of 3. All right? And we'll talk about eccentricity here in a second. So, um, guys, as far as like graphing something like this, you're not going to have anything that you're going to have to, you know, graph. You guys can obviously approximate. But the ones that you guys will have to graph, you will have exact value. So you guys can just use decimal approximations and sketch the graph as close as you have to um, for a problem like that. But when you guys have a test, you will have exact values that you'll be graphing. Okay? But that's how you find the center of uh, foci and vertices. Just remember, guys, if you're given something in this formula, you have to complete the square. So you have it now in this form. Once you have it in this form, you know what A, you know what B is. You can use that to find C, and you know what the center is. That's all you have to do. Okay? Oh, that's all you have to do. All you have to do. I mean, guys, the video I just made was only 19 minutes long. That's it? <laughs>